buildings. Uh, cannot see this building that's in the back that is one we're in today, but it's it's in the back. Same building, better picture, 1911. Around 1916, we came in and we enclosed and tied the, the two buildings together. We still have the lookout tower. It's even more dominated. We've got more structure in the middle, and then we've got our flag for the guide fishermen. We've wrapped around the porch. We put in chimneys. We have heat, and we are we are really getting wow. modern. Okay. 
that be the Nelson J? Or Nelson J? Yeah. And Mansfield? No, not the Nelson J. Oh, the uh, Mansfield. Mansfield. Okay. Yeah. Or Major Mansfield. Yeah. Now, where the building originated, we're not sure. We're not sure if it was on this footprint. I kind of think it probably was. But, you know, we don't have that proof. And, you know, we're still striving to come down to to some documentation to, to prove where the building originated. So we have three stories basically starting in 1886. It was the Tarpon Inn. Then in 1886, the city, I don't even know if it was Ropesville yet. When did we turn to Ropesville? So it really wasn't even a city. So at this point, it was either Star or Mustang Point. Or Sandpoint, we, you know, we've heard of several names. I don't think it was incorporated. It was just on a map or something. Now, when 1886, Frank was also the assistant keeper at the lighthouse, I understand. Keeper and, first. Keeper first? And then assistant. And he hired, uh, shortly after that, he hired Mary Hatfield or Mary Cotter and uh, J.E. Cotter, James E. Cotter, to run the end while he worked the lighthouse. Well then after that he ended, ended up selling it to him in 1896 and then the, the Cotters were the actual owners of it at that point. Uh, do you have something? Rick? No. no. So at about that time we went from whatever to Ropesville and then we've gone from Ropesville to Tarpon. So this building here has lived through three city names Delaware Fort A, and it was actually predated the Ropesville era, which is really, I consider, kind of our first name. And a lot of this is Guthrie. Guthrie couldn't be here, but he could really, he knows this old stuff out of much, much better than I do. So, 1900 come around, 1900, and we know the main building burnt to the ground. We're not sure on this building. We don't have that documentation either, but we know we lost the tarpon in to the fire of 1900. We don't know the date, and we're still needing some confirmation on that. That's something else we're working on. But there's been too many stories of it losing by fire. So what we're seeing is actually the second end. We still have not seen to date a picture of the first end. So that's Working. Mark, question: What came first, Tarpon, Texas, or the, was that the name of Tarpon? Tarpon Inn. Inn. The Tarpon Inn. So that's the, the one, question. One report says Tarpon, Texas, was named after the Inn. 1889 is the literature that I've got that says that Brooksville took the name Tarpon, Texas, from the Inn. It specifically said, I mean, Colonel Ropes went belly up, but then the channel through, the, the, the dredge is, the dredge the channel through, got stuck, it's still there in the sand dunes today. So uh, he went broke, everybody lost the public support, so it's, they didn't want to leave it Ropesville, so they changed it to Tarpon after the, the landmark that was here. So 1907, we've got the complete Tarpon in. It consists of two buildings with an open way, a breezeway in the middle, and a lookout tower on the top. This was the, the one that was built after the fire in 1900, and this is the famous Tarpon Inn that we've seen so many pictures of today. The lookout tower, I'm not sure, I don't know a lot about it, but what they used to do, the fishing guides, each fishing guide had their own designated flag of what what it would be. When the Tarpon Inn had a, a trip for one, they would raise that flag up and the guide would see that flag and they'd, they'd know they have a fishing trip for the next day. Um, I wish we had the flag, so it would be great. After 1907, when J.E. Cotter owned it. It didn't change much to 1911. I printed this because it's a much better picture. I think you can see the gap in the middle, the two buildings. Uh, you cannot see this building that's in the back that is one we're in today, but it's, it's in the back. 
same building, better picture, 1911. Around 1916, we came in and we enclosed and tied the, the two buildings together. We still have the lookout tower. It's even more dominated. We've got more structure in the middle. And then we've got our flag for the guide fishermen. We've wrapped around the porch. We've put in chimneys. We have heat. And we are, we are really getting modern. <laughs> today. Do we have an outhouse still? Yes. yes. It's okay, yeah, that's, that's Probably where I live. <laughs> <laughs> 1919 storm came along, took the main structure out, took all the reported seven buildings left in town. Took, uh, there was 14 families left in town after the 1919 storm. Did a lot of damage, did not have a big death toll, I think we had a little bit. We had a few people died, according to Bill Sims. It's because it's their own fault. He actually says that in the interview. All right, this picture here, we're looking from behind us, from, from an area behind us over towards uh, Oak St. Station, this is where this picture is shot from. You can see in this picture, this is the house that we see across the street. It used to be the, the keeper of the uh, life saving station, Ed White, who the White Street is named after. And this building right here is the building we're standing in today. And it was a two story structure because it didn't lose the second floor until 1968 into a fire. Same building we're in today. It was all that was left of the Tarpon Inn after 1919 storm. It continued operation as, as the Tarpon Inn, just on a much smaller basis. Ed Cotter was still the owner of it at that time. 1925, J.M. Ellis, who has been here for some time, yeah. bought the property, got uh, some financial help from a man in Waco named Earl and rebuilt the main structure and that's the structure we're looking at today. What was the date on that? Talking in? Yeah, when was the date? 1925. That's when he bought it. It, it didn't get finished till probably 26, 27. And he built the main structure. He put the pilings down 16 feet in concrete. They're on the, the corner of every room to help make it last through hurricanes, which it has lasted through many hurricanes. Uh, on the end here is the restaurant, and I have the same picture from a different angle. And if, if you, when you get up here and look, you can kind of see, again, this is around 1925. It's really probably more like 26. There's the target end. There's that building. Here's the building we're in. Been here a long time. It's still, still here today, and then the Coast Guard Station built in 25 which is no longer there, it's been replaced. But if you look, those streets, look how desolate the town is. Just not much left after 1919 storm. 1931, when Port Aranjas really started picking up, we had a causeway, we had ferries. They extended the Tarpon Inn, and if you look at this picture, the date on this picture was January 3rd, 1931. They've added on units. And uh, this is the full length of the building today. In the back, you still see that building. The one we're in now, still two-story with the widow's watch on top. If you see, we've actually got a little bit of vehicular traffic on the street finally, 1931. We didn't have many vehicles before that. We had one vehicle on the island for the most part, and that was to meet the boat at the dock when they came in to, to haul the passengers. Bill, did you have a question? Bill Ellis's interview at the museum says that his dad bought the property from Gordon Hunsell. No mention has been made of his ownership. What right. That? He bought the land in front of the Tarpon Inn that had the Hunt Club, the Porte Club, with all the little houses in that 1927 panoramic photo. That's what he bought from Gordon Hunsell. So he didn't buy it? No, the end he did not. Munsell never owned the end. 
the property across the street that actually is in the Ellis family today, that Maude Ellis still owns, is what he bought from, from Munsell, because I, I had the same interview. And he bought those that had all those little square buildings that are still in town, but they're yeah. all over town. And that's what he bought from Munsell, because Munsell built that facility as a kind of a competitor to this. And, and in that 27, 28 panoramic photo, you can see it's that those little buildings are new, crisp, that's landscape. You have parking for vehicles under, you have shaded parking for vehicles and you have water system. And if you, if you go on that photo and blow it up real good on a computer, you can read the signs and everything. It's really an impressive structure. And that was the purpose of those panoramics is Munsell brought uh, Mr. Patterson in to take those pictures to promote his uh, Port Aransas Hunt Club. Uh, we've got some newspaper articles on that that, you know, where he's marketing that project. Bill also said that uh, Munsell owned much of the waterfront at that time. It did. And, and that's where the Ellis's bought it when Munsell started having financial troubles. But Munsell did. He never owned the end, uh, according to the records we have. Bill Ellis's dad, J.M. Ellis, bought it in 25. Munsell wasn't here until... 20, 24, 23. Right. This is a picture of this, basically the same picture we just looked at, except it's a finished product. It's a sharp looking building. It's, it's very crisp. The lines are very straight. It's a very well built building. Very well constructed. And uh, it hasn't changed much from this point on. Uh, in the background, you can see the museum that we use for the museum in its second location. Uh, it's presently in its third. It was on Mercer and Oaks as, as the beginning. And then you see the uh, Woodman Hall that some of us have heard a lot about. Last. Just because Leroy put us on for today, I printed one recent picture of it, and I had to put Leroy as the owner. And, and it's not a good picture. It's a picture from file photos, so I didn't have a whole lot. It's better than Google Earth. But uh, I, think, I think Mark and I need to go take some very nice pictures. Absolutely. Of, of this. Maybe even get Tim up and take some pictures. We should have some very good photos of this when we don't. So we'll get with John and when he's got it, the palm trees trimmed. <laughs> the covers, the palm trees are high enough now. You don't see it from the air like this picture. Does it still say tarpon in on the top? No, ma'am. Oh, we. It was missing whenever they last regrouped. Okay. I didn't think it did. It did up into the 90s. I have a 92 picture. It still says tarpon in on the roof. And, and it does look good. It, it's fitting. Uh, the tarpon in, the Matthews Place, and the Coast Guard are the three most photographed buildings. The landmarks for Port Aransas. They're in every photo. Uh, of course, we don't have the Matthews Building anymore. It was torn down after Hurricane Celia. The Coast Guard Station, it tore it down, rebuilt a new ugly one. Yeah. So the the tarpon in is still here. It still looks good. It's, he's done a very nice job of preserving it. Uh, we'll get some great pictures in the file of the current day. But um, it still works. It still works. Now 1956 is when they put indoor bathrooms. So up until then, <laughs> you did not have indoor bathrooms. Now there's a lot of information on the end that. That. <laughs> well, this is, this is Port Aransas. <laughs> we still don't have TV, do we? Do we have TV? Uh, only in the FDR. Well, if you looked at the walls, you'd understand why there's no TVs. There's, there's. <laughs> We're always going to give us a walk and there's wires running through the walls. <laughs> yeah. There was no insulation at all. Really? It's really, a, it's a unique facility. It's the place you can come. You don't have telephones. You don't have TVs. You can sit on the 
sitting on the porch must be just beautiful to sit there and watch the people. It would be where I'd want to stay if I was coming. We have way more drunks as customers than we have people with little kids. <laughs> and all it takes is one family with some kids at 7 a.m. on Saturday oh morning my. watching cartoons to have everybody in the hotel mad. And if you really want to see how people's personalities uh, conflict, let's say, get a hotel. <laughs> It is a different facility. And, uh, to, to go back slightly, uh, the, first off, this is the icon of our town, period. I mean, that's it. The icon, this is what defines our town. This building under these two. That sign on the top that said Tarpon Inn, <clears throat> according to the information I got, was put there by the 99s. Remember, they were the first women aviators. And first what? Women aviators. 99 of them had licenses and they put together a group called the 99s and it was their local chapter that airmarked the tarpon in. Yeah, well it's a shame, but we, we, we just rerouted it and, and that, that's a long story and you go ahead and I'll I'll get into some of the nuances of right. I don't want to steal this thing. Yeah, Leroy is will walk us through. We want to look at the lobby. You want to look at the fish scales. Uh, the, the scales are just amazing to look at. There's so many. I think they have been logged as far as, you know, gridded and, and logged, and that's something we need to get our hands on as far as where each scale might be. Uh, we may want to get some great pictures of that. We may, we may bring somebody in to take pictures of that wall if you don't already have it. Uh, they're pat Fire in 68 took the second floor of this building. The, that's all that we're aware of. Yeah. That's, 68. that's why we're two story. We're, we're two story now. We're one story. That was a fire in uh, 1968. And I can assure you that's true. We took this end cap off and looked up in there, and it was still charred. I guess they got it put out before the bottom, before it burned through. But it's the the the, the ceiling joist, which is the first for the, is the floor joist for the second floor. The ceiling joist for the first floor are burned considerably. Oh, there's, there's still a uh, yeah tub. cast iron tub right there. Got yeah, the tub's right up here. <laughs> wow. They just wow. closed it in. Bear claw tub still sits up now. I am I've been in the fire department thirty years. So I have to be real careful what we say, but the photo I have of it on fire, it doesn't look that bad at that time, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> what went wrong, I don't know. I also know we, we had a fire after uh, Hurricane Gilbert. Yeah, we did. We, yeah. we had just gotten back and, the, and it was on fire on the very end unit. And, yep. And we, uh, well, we didn't have water back on and I'm also to blame for that. <laughs> but, uh, You're not aware of another fire in early I am not. We had a fire since I owned it. The, all that wiring that you see has got junction boxes along the back wall. And it was the old type of wiring that had a wax paper uh, shelf. And but before I bought the hotel, they put an automatic sprinkler system in. And the sprinklers were set to go off at like 5 o'clock in the morning. And, and <laughs> they arc those two wires. <laughs> it got so hot and burned. The arcing was so bad that it started the texture of the building on fire. But what saved this is the wires, of course, burned in two. And the, and the building, it did burn a hole through the out, through the through the skin portion of the exterior of the building. But the uh, Water sprinklers put that out. So the fire department got here just in time. Not that bad. Thing. Yeah. There was a fire while I fell on it. It was in Valley End down there, 90s, sometime in the 98. 90s. Pardon? 98, I believe. It, 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 uh, it, it went for three days before they actually turned it into the fire department. Just sort of smoked it. Yeah, with, back was it the long. four end units? Somewhere along the yeah. line, I heard there was four. The four end units had a fire at some point in time, but I don't know the history. Very late in the history of that was.
Mark, Mark and I were talking briefly before the session. We were talking about, you know, everybody's seen that iconic photo of the boatman's meeting in this, in this space. That's right. And so I was wondering, after when the hall burned down, I mean, is there any kind of evidence or, or is, did this maybe serve as that function for a while? Well, this that picture predates Woodman Hall burning down. Okay. Woodman Hall burnt down about, would have been about 1944. Uh, mm -hmm. That picture was taken in the 20s and 30s. I, I actually think we have a date, and I think Leroy's got a great picture of that in his lobby that, that we'll need to scan. So that, our only picture is the South Jetty uh, reproduction, so it's, it's not a good quality. We need to get a good, good picture of that one. But it is in this room, and I believe it's taken from that angle. And the building looks much like it does today. It did have uh, some fish, fish, fish all the way around. Right. Right. But it doesn't look much different, and it's got uh, a lot of the old Port Aransas fishing guys in it. Yeah, well, Bubba Lee is still alive. He was in it. <laughs> I'm sure he was. And he remembers the day. But um, any other questions on the end? I didn't go into all the little details. We could be here all day. There's a lot of old stories to go with the end. Some of them I wish we knew. There's, there's going to be a ton of them. The one story where a kid held so many helium balloons that he ended up floating over the right. channel. <laughs> And they got them down by shooting the balloons. <laughs> and that's a, that is a, a newspaper article yeah, published in, the, in the newspaper. <laughs> 1902, I believe. Not sure I put a lot of faith in that. <laughs> Somebody I guess he didn't have much choice. He had to sit there and hold on while they were shooting at those balloons. I, just, I don't buy it. <laughs> but I'm going to print that for you. You need to put that in the lobby. I do. Okay, we're going to walk the grounds. Going to show us the uh, the FDR room. Is it open? I I believe so. I'll have to check with the front desk. That's I've been in Houston, so I just got back to old uh, The lobby is beautiful. Be sure to look at the lobby. We'll look at a couple of units. Ask questions. There's not a lot of difference over these years. He's kept it very much like its original construction. Before we leave this bit, the kitchen. You can see where there's a. Uh, area here that's been filled in. This was the store room. It was never the kitchen. The kitchen was in what we call the apartment back here. And supposedly back in the days when when they, and there, I hear all sorts of things that you never know really what's true and what's not true. But one of the stories that we were told is there were three black families that lived in the, uh, what people refer to as the slave quarters. It was long shotgun we can build it right here. And one bathroom, one kitchen, and three families living in the country. And that the, the one fellow was the cook. And the, the wives involved, their, their wives were the people that made the beds and did the laundry and various things like, I guess, washed the dishes, things like that. <clears throat> but apparently the cook decided that one of the white staff was seeing his wife or something. And, and the story we got him through a meat cleaver at him and he killed the guy. So all the ghost hunters say this is our most haunted spot. So, or whatever that's worth, that's a story. Now you do have one unit also that is. Yeah,
Until we start.